It's coming up to a month now since restrictions were lifted on international flights into and out of Ireland. According to Eurocontrol, air travel across Europe is back at about 70% of pre-pandemic levels, with air travel here back at around 50% of where it was prior to COVID. Owen Corey is editor of Air and Travel. And given that it started back at about a third of pre-pandemic capacity last month, Owen, it sounds like schedules are coming back on stream at quite a pace. Are these uh, planes generally fairly full? Uh, it varies massively from airline to airline, but most interesting from an Irish point of view, uh, Ryanair, who were running at uh, load factors uh, of to below 60%, are now talking about 85% uh, for their load factors right across Europe. Obviously, most of that is off the island of Ireland. Uh, they are doing a lot better though than the other airlines. What we're seeing is two low-cost airlines, Ryanair and Wiz, returning with great gusto to the skies, and a lot of the other airlines, particularly the traditional ones, a little bit slower, uh, both on the take-up of flights and on load factors. For example, Brian, uh, Ryanair is now the busiest airline in Europe. It's 1,000 flights a day ahead of its nearest air, uh, nearest rival, which is Turkish Airlines. I, I know you've been on one or two flights yourself. What's it like on uh, flights at the moment? Uh, are, are people quite nervous about flying? Is there adequate physical distancing on board? Um, physical distancing on board doesn't. It, it, every, the full uh, seats are filled. The three seats are filled across. That decision was taken very, very early in the game, uh, not just in Europe but right across the world. Uh, what we saw at the beginning was a great deal of apprehension, a great deal of nervousness, uh, getting through the airport, getting to the gate, the checking of the extra documentation. Documentation is probably an old-fashioned word because everything's on the phone. But what I saw, um, I mean, obviously the rest of Europe moved and jumped a bit earlier than us. All the other countries were up and running July the 1st. We came in July the 19th. And over the week since, uh, people getting a little bit more used to it. It's like our first flight again, Brian. Just once that first one is done, it gets a lot uh, more easier and people get more relaxed. Now, uh, Reiner and uh, Aer Lingus presumably accounting for the bulk of the traffic off the island. And Aer Lingus started flying its Dublin to Washington route again uh, last week. Uh, it, it, there, but there are restrictions still in place for travel to the US. So who's flying on those routes? Uh, it's all Americans at the moment who cannot get into uh, the US if you're an Irish passport holder. Uh, great news that um, Aer Lingus stuck to that date of August the 13th for starting up. Obviously, United feed their network uh, for inbound uh, through uh, Washington Dulles. The next big date to watch for Aer Lingus is San Francisco. It's a very, very important route for us. It's the uh, tech run, and that's due to get up and running on October the 11th. But Aer Lingus and all the transatlantic airlines need uh, the US to open up. Uh, it probably will happen around September the uh, Labor Day, I think it's around September the 6th, and uh, there will be a raft of, uh, air, of airline sales as soon as we get clearance to try and stimulate traffic on those routes. You've heard it first in Morning Ireland. And there looks to be a bit of competition uh, on those transatlantic routes. JetBlue is starting to fly between the US and Europe now. It, this is a great time for a first mover, for somebody who hasn't uh, been taking the sort of the punishing losses that uh, happened during COVID. JetBlue has been talking about a transatlantic uh, low cost for many, many years. They've decided to move now. Interestingly enough, the founder of Norwegian is also talking about relaunching uh, a, new, a, a brand new one. From Aer Lingus' point of view, they're in a good position. Their unit costs are much lower than their competitors on transatlantic. Uh, they're roaring to get back on those transatlantic routes uh, and they will have a co-chair with JetBlue as well. So they're grouping themselves with uh, it's never been cheaper to cross the Atlantic sort of message. It'll be interesting to see how that plays off, uh, out in the autumn, Brian. Indeed, Owen Corrie, thank you very much indeed.